Alrighty, we are live. Michael Jordan, thank you for joining us today. We've got Michael Jordan from Unreal with us. Um, Trent, do you want to throw anything in here before we get started? Otherwise, I'm just going to dive right into it. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's, let's just do this. I have something coming about my name. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that route again. You're expecting sure you... someone that looks totally different, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what? Now I'm putting together your your Instagram bio. I, I oh, that didn't click right away. It didn't click. So <laughs> sorry, maybe I'm it's not just taller, darker, and better at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're the real Michael Jordan, though, and you know there's there's a, a Michael B. Jordan too, isn't there? Sexiest man alive. He was voted back this year. Yeah, I got a lot I, to live I up heard, to. Yeah, I heard that you were the, the second sexiest man alive, though, in the same <laughs> rating. So the second place <laughs> in that category is not too bad. Not I'll too bad. It. I'll take it. I'm sure Beyonce is proud. I'm sure she's very <laughs> proud. Um, let, let's get into it, though. So this is a Minnesota-based podcast. I want to start with like how you ended up in Minnesota and your upbringing a little bit. So if you would, wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about um, – your childhood and how you got started in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it wasn't by choice. I was born and raised here, um, but very thankful to be, to be, uh, you know, in the great state of Minnesota. It's, um, you know, it's, I, I could do without the cold winters. That's for sure. I'll probably be a snowbird at some point, but, you know, I really love, I love just the, uh, you know, everything that Minnesota has to offer, you really appreciate the seasons and you appreciate getting into warmer weather, you know, after, after a super cold freezing winter. And, you know, I did it the true Minnesotan way, you know, played hockey growing up and, and golf in the off season and lacrosse in the spring. And so kind of got to see, you know, all different sides of Minnesota. And I, I grew up in, a And yeah, man, just kind of born and raised, tried and true, and you know, spent the cat, spent uh, you know, winter, or the summers up north at the cabin, and you know, just like you guys, I'm sure. And um, yeah, I went to Wiper Lake for high school, and then oh no, oh, when that no. was, uh oh, where are you from? <laughs> I'm a Hill Murray guy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Should All we right. end it right now? Uh, so it is, it well, it was right. nice talking to you, Michael. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Trent, are you a Hill Murray guy as well? No, I'm a, I'm a Hermantown guy. I don't know if you've heard of Hermantown at all or not. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> yep. Up north. Yep. Great hockey town. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the good news for me is we got the better of you guys my senior year. Um, finally made it to state and, and were able to break the the curse, if you will, of, of getting smoked by you guys every single year in, in the section finals. So um, so that was great, and finally got that off our shoulders. But ended up losing in the first round, as as White Bear typically does. You know, that's a whole <laughs> other curse. But um, but no, man, I, I you know I love where I grew up and and wouldn't trade it for anything. And you know, we're I'm getting ready to buy a house here in Minnesota right now. I'm doing the condo life downtown. And as you, as you mentioned before, we jumped on here, you know, just got engaged and, and kind of making that transition into adulthood and getting our you know first, first real house. So I'll actually have to mow a lawn and, and plow a driveway, which I'm not, not super eager about, but <laughs> um, you know, it's all part of it. So. Cool. Well, I think you'll come to enjoy those two things though, or the mowing lawns and, Plowing driveways are two of the most Minnesotan things that I know of. Um, <laughs> that is true. I, I want to talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. And I, I think yours started a little bit earlier than than probably most people's. Um, I was reading an old article uh, and I saw that you learned to code in HTML. Is that is that right? And you started building websites for people when you were like 13? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, you know, I was more into the graphic design side of it than I was into the coding, but you have to, yeah. especially back then, you had to know both. Both There really wasn't, uh, you know, there wasn't the, the Wix platforms and things like that where it's pretty easy to plug and play and just move move things around. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was back when I was probably 12 or 13, um, Comcast kind of came to fruition and, and took over the – you guys probably don't even remember this, but it was all dial up internet when I was, I was young and websites sucked. Like we, we basically used the internet for like AIM, which you guys probably don't even know, but it's like the old school Facebook messenger. Um, 
<laughs> you guys don't know what that is? <laughs> uh, I, I remember, oh I know what dial up internet is because I think we had it when I was like five. And I remember like hearing the old computer turn on, like the ee or ee or. Yeah. But other yeah. Than that, just nothing. <laughs> so, well, when that happened, it was websites kind of became, you know, exciting and like there was actually, you could browse around, and learn information on them. It wasn't just, you know, raw data on, on websites. Gosh, I'm old. Um, <laughs> and so when I saw that, I was pretty intrigued by it, wanted to learn exactly how to build these things. And, and so I kind of just dove all in and used Google as kind of my, my course book, if you will, and got, you know, got pretty far along with that. So I was, like I said, doing a lot of graphic design and then kind of figuring out how to splice it and encode it into an HTML site. And I grew up, like I said, in White Bear. I was caddying um, at, at Delwood Country Club, which is not mm -hmm. too far. Um, yeah. So I, I was caddying there basically every day. And fortunately for me, most of the guys that I carried bags for were, owned a small or medium-sized business. And so I would, I would kind of just hustle it both ways. And I'll carry your bag, <laughs> and then you know, what do you need for a website? I'll do it for half of what I, whatever the agency would charge you. And so that was kind of my yeah, my little hustle grind through you know junior high, high school and got pretty decent I, I would say you know i wasn't um i was good enough to put a website together and make things look pretty but i wasn't a phenomenal coder by any means um but you know it really evolved my my uh entrepreneurial path i would say and then just my my skill set of being able to you know design things to to meet a certain aesthetic and put together kind of a, a brand for different companies that i was working for and so it started there and then um you know, I had a couple of clients call and say, Hey, you know, you did my logo. Can you, can you put it on some hats and t-shirts? And, and so I'm like, well, you know, I don't, I don't really know how to do that, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll call some people and see what we can do. And so I called up a few different, you know, embroidery shops and things like that around and ended up connecting with a guy named Derek Cooper, who mm -hmm. was a hockey, co former hockey coach in white bear. Um, okay. And he had a little like embroidery screen print operation going in his basement called Coop Sportswear. And so he started stitching up shirts and, and it was mainly like polo. You're, you'd buy like a generic polo and stitch a logo on the, on the chest or whatever, buy a you know generic hat, stitch a logo on. And it was, that was kind of the breakthrough for me seeing like, okay, I had this idea in my head. I designed it up on, on Photoshop or Illustrator, you know, one of the Adobe products and, that part was always cool for me, seeing like a vision come out of my head and onto paper, if you will. Uh, but then seeing it on a tangible garment was kind of the, the real breakthrough for me. I just fell in love with that process of like bringing an idea to life. And so um, that's kind of where it all started was, you know, that was the first run of, of apparel I did was just doing kind of these small, you know, 12 piece orders for different corporate accounts. Um, and then it turned into White Bear Hockey needed their team apparel stuff done. And and I was the the go to option, being that I you know just graduated and and played hockey there. So um, yeah, I kind of started off and just naturally progressed over the years. And you know, pretty quickly after starting Unreal, I got tired of of buying other people's blank garments and stitching logos. So I said, I'm gonna just make my own garments. I got you know my own ideas that I think are better on how to make these things and. I figured it would be pretty easy, you know, everyone else seems to be able to do it, but I had no idea what I was getting myself into making garments is like building a house. <laughs> so right. we had to, we had to dive in head first once we made that decision. So it's been a fun journey though, for sure. Yeah. Really cool. And that, that's something that I, I saw growing up. I think the first encounter that I had with unreal was with Woodbury hockey. Looking back, it, it was probably with white bear hockey and I just didn't know it, but, um, when I was probably on the tail end of my youth career, uh, I know Woodbury Hockey was probably, I would assume, was one of your first customers. And they had all probably. of your apparel. And it, I felt like knowing knowing that you started um, I felt, looking back on it, that a lot of that was probably a, a, a smooth transition from the apparel that you're making for um, those clients there. So I, I just found that to be really interesting. Um, it's been really cool to hear how Unreal got up and running. And I saw it was started. It was it just started in your dorm room when you were at Mankato? Yeah, yeah. Well, well kind of. Um, I'll give you the kind of the full story there. You mentioned GamingJerseys.com. So 
when I was in college, oh, I finished high school and I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do for college. I, I was looking yeah. at potentially going to the art institute and doing like web design or graphic design and trying to perfect that that skill set. Um, I toured it. it. Didn't really look like you know what I had envisioned for my college journey, and and you know the costs were extremely expensive. And so you know what, I've kind of got myself this far with the web design and graphic design thing. Maybe I go just get a business degree and kind of round myself out, learn learn that side of it. And so I I was stumbling around. I wanted to go to the U of M. I had good grades through high school, but I was too late to apply into the Carlson School. So like, gosh, you know. I spend all that money on, uh, um, you know, like liberal arts uh, school and, and then try to make a transfer a couple of years in. I, I, I was kind of at a stalemate and, and uh, for whatever reason, I didn't uh, prioritize my college, you know, applications as well as I probably should have. Um, but last minute, it was like end of July. One of my friends from Forest Lake called me up and said he had an extra room in his place in Mankato. Uh, he had an apartment and he's like, you want to come down there? I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> so so <laughs> I went and, I went down to Mankato. I figured let's uh, at least get the generals out of the way. You know, that might be a better experience than just doing like, you know, you're probably familiar with like Century College or, or one of the local community colleges. That was kind of my plan B to just knock out the generals. But Ended up at Mankato, and as I was there, I started doing um, doing a bunch of freelance design work and web design stuff, and I was just looking on the internet for different jobs and stumbled across one where a guy needed um, catalogs designed or, or new jersey templates for softball, hockey jerseys, and it was uh, a printing method I had never heard of. It's called sublimation printing. And um, essentially, you design the whole thing on, on Adobe, and you can print the entire garment or print the whole the whole piece of fabric and as many colors as you want and logos and things like that. It's it's a lot less limiting than like a traditional screen print or embroidery. Um, and so I was kind of intrigued by it and I, I took the job and I'm designing different, you know, templates for say white bear hockey, Woodbury hockey, or you know, beer league softball team core, you know, whatever it may be. And and so I'm putting this catalog together. I'm learning what sublimation is. And then my roommate, the guy that had called me and, and told me to come live with him or asked me to come live with him, rather, uh, comes walking in one night. It's probably like midnight or 1230. And he's like, dude, you got to see this. These kids are these kids are making uh, super big money playing video games. And you know, all I, I mean, I, I played some video games growing up, too, and like was pretty into the whole Halo scene. And um, so I, I understood that that realm. Um, but my roommates, they were, they were like balls to the walls on call of duty. So <laughs> they come, they come in and show me the, you know, this picture it was like a news article of these kids standing up on a podium holding this, you know, hundred thousand dollar check or whatever it was big check. And they were wearing screen print t-shirts and it had, you know, all their sponsor logos all over them. And I'm like, huh, you know, maybe there's an idea here where we bring this sublimation into the gaming world. So, I just quick typed in gaming jerseys on Google and nothing popped up really. I mean, there's like a couple screen print t-shirt companies that said, well, print your gaming jersey or whatever, you know, kind of gimmicky stuff. And so I searched gamingjerseys.com and it was available. So like, hmm. I bought that domain name and, and built a website, started making all the templates for, for the gaming side of thing. And, and uh, I ended up calling up the guy that hired me to do this catalog for his softball and hockey jersey stuff. And, said, hey, I'd like to meet with you in the cities. I've got a new idea and um, want to pitch you on something. So I showed him the websites and everything that I had kind of built out and said, you know, look, here's here's what I'm proposing. It's um, I'm going to launch this brand and I, I need a manufacturing partner. So I can either, you know, go find somebody or, or do it, you know, overseas or wherever. But I figure I'm already working with you. The stars are kind of aligning here. And essentially, it would just be a new sales channel for your existing business. You do all the manufacturing and distribution, and I'll run the rest of the business. And so um, we agreed to terms there. I, I pitched him on 51.49. He came back and said, let's go 50-50. I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and I uh, didn't really put much thought into it. I was 18 at the time, and you know he was probably 45 or so, and I was just pretty psyched that you know, he wanted to be in business with me. And so we dove in and, and uh, launched this website. And things were going pretty good. We ended up getting a licensing deal with Major League Gaming. And that was like the NFL of video games at the time. And they host all the, you know, the world championship tournaments and stuff. That was where that picture was taken that I had seen on my roommate's laptop. And 
So it looked like it was going to be a, a huge, huge deal. And um, essentially, they would take us under their wing. Anybody that signs up for a tournament had to buy a, an official MLG jersey through our website. And, and so when that all happened, um, you know, long story short, had a falling out with my business partner. He kind of wanted to merge the two companies together and, and uh, it involved, you know, bringing family members in and all kinds of stuff, but ultimately involved my equity cutting down to a small fraction of what it was. And, um, you know, I just felt like I was kind of being taken advantage of in the situation. And so um, it turned into a, you know, both sides lawyer up and, and go through the whole arbitration process. And so I had, uh, I had prior in my departments and then and then midway through sophomore year i dropped out because we had this this major league gaming deal on the table and i needed to be back in the cities and, and working in the office full time and um and so kind of gave up you know everything i was i was going for to pursue this opportunity and then when this kind of stalemate happened it was it was a pretty you know tough point in my early career i would say and it it was a lot of just turmoil. You wake up every day you have a pit in your stomach and you're like, you know, you feel like you created this thing. You've been working hard at it. And then it's gonna, you know, feels like it's kind of being ripped away. And so we spent eight months going through the arbitration process and dealing with lawyers. And it was kind of like, like that Facebook movie came out, the social network. It was very similar to that, um, where you're not in a courtroom, you're in like a attorney's office going back and forth and trying to settle before you go to court. Um, and, you know, ultimately it was, we had come to an agreement on, you know, we, we got to the point where it was not healthy to work together anymore because we just had, you know, so much turmoil between the two of us that uh, one of us had to walk away. And so I, I said, I, I mean, I, I thought I should probably be the one running it, but he, my part, my former partner, you know, felt pretty strongly he should be and that he had all the equipment and stuff. So I finally agreed, said, okay, you know, you, you run it and I'll, I'll continue to run the website and put new designs up because uh, I get a royalty or a, a percentage of the sales for every unit sold. So it's kind of in my best interest to keep things fresh and, and current. Um, so I liked that proposal. I, you know, I agreed to that. And then we would go back and, uh, well, we'd shake hands at the table, thought we had a deal done and then you know, I'd go through the contract in, in depth and realize there's some fine print on page 45 that says, you know, if the logo changes, then no royalties get paid. And I'm like, wait a second, you know, and now I know what happens tomorrow. A new logo rolls out and I'm out of the whole deal. Like, it just seemed like there was always a catch. And at that point, I was I was racking up a pretty good bill with my attorney. And I'm 19 at the time. And I'm like, okay, I'm a college dropout. I owe my attorney $50,000 right now. I got 20 in student debt or 25 and I, I'm just not in a good spot and I, I didn't want to keep kicking the can and you know get, you know working with this with my attorneys and trying to figure this out if I felt like there was always going to be a catch you know at the end mm -hmm. so finally just said all right I've had enough I'm going to pull the plug and just cut my losses here and you know take my licks and basically that's that's kind of what we did and um the company ended up just basically dissolving, uh, which was a bummer. But the cool part of the whole thing was we kind of created the standard for for e or sorry for esports jerseys. Um, now it's like that's that's the standard is the sublimated jersey, and, and I feel like we kind of were the the front of that, you know, bringing it to fruition. So that was that was kind of cool and 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 exciting, but um, ultimately didn't end up you know reaping any reward from it. Um, so it was uh definitely like it was a really good learning lesson and honestly i'm so happy that it happened because i think if i would have just hit, hit a home run there on the first swing i would would really not appreciate what it takes to to do it all over again and and um you know i probably would have fallen on my face at some point and and fallen a lot harder than i did so i'm sure it was a, a really good blessing in disguise and i i kind of look at it as my my mba program as a dropout you know i learned so much going through that with the attorneys and and uh just the legal side of business and so um super good experience but um you know a gut-wrenching one at that it, it sucked being in that position of okay now it's all over and i've got all these bills to pay and i am dropped out of school i don't have a job i you know i've got a lot of negatives going on in my life um and so at that point, I mean, you want me to continue into the next segment or should yeah, I? Yeah, keep it going. I'm going to ask, so you might as well just right, keep right. going. <laughs> yeah, cut me off at any point and just ask questions. Nope. But I am just um, listening. 
at that point, I, you know, I was in a bit of a bad place, but I, I said, you know, we got to get back on our feet and, and do something here. So, um, I called up one of my, one of my, you know, family friends or guys that I caddied for, um, back in the day and, um, asked for a job. He had an appraisal company, um, real estate appraisals. And so he had mentioned something to me, uh, you know, a while earlier, if you ever need a job, you know, we'd love to, to train you in and get you into the real estate appraisal thing. And so, so, well, it's probably the best time I'm going to have. So I called him up and, and got in as a trainee real estate appraiser and started doing that. Um, and as I, as I did that, I, that was my kind of steady, you know, regular paycheck. Um, and then at night I was working on something else. I had an idea for our brand, um, you know, similar to what I was doing with gaming jerseys, but I thought of the idea probably like, you know, a year into the gaming jerseys thing, somewhere around that 18, 19 years old mark um, to create a, a sports brand or a lifestyle brand that, that re really resonates with athletes and call it unreal. Because basically every time I see somebody win a championship game, they go, oh, well, how did that feel? And, and uh, the response is always, it was unreal. And it's, it's like the word that seems like athletes more commonly than anyone else uses to describe the indescribable and uh are just the best moments in life and so i'm like what a great name you know that, that could be a really cool brand and um and so i kind of had actually i had a website already halfway built for unreal while gaming jerseys was still going on and um, <laughs> and so when i pulled the plug on gaming jerseys it was kind of a natural next step to launch that site and the only problem was i didn't have any money to do it so um i had 300 dollars in my savings account tucked away and i, I said you know what go i mean it's not going big, but you know, we're going to go home either way. <laughs> so we'll pull it out and let's, let's see how many hats and t-shirts we can buy for $300 and see what we can do. So I pulled out that 300 bucks, called up, uh, Derek Cooper, the Coop sportswear guy that I had connected with back when I was, you know, somewhere between 13 and 16. And, uh, so they come on over, we'll figure it out. And we, we stitched up some hats and, and printed some t-shirts, got a website going and, and, uh, you know, launched the social media channels and, and just started running with it. And so at that point I was, I was in mom's basement back in Wiper Lake, uh, college dropout. And that Christmas, I think she had got me a, a printer so I could, it was like a, a little, uh, HP, like almost like a normal desk printer. Um, but I rigged it up and modified it to print sublimation inks. So I was like doing all the sublimation <laughs> printing in her basement. <laughs> and, uh, you know, doing what we could to bootstrap this thing. And, and, and yeah, you know, it started out really small. It was like, you know, buying t-shirts that were blank from a distributor and then doing our own prints on them and really focusing on the graphics more than the, the garments yeah. itself. Um, Who were you selling them to at the time? It was, you know, guys like you and me, you know, it was, it, we mm -hmm. took, we kind of took off on Twitter early on and it was, so it was like former hockey players essentially or current hockey players. Yeah. It started out as kind of, you know, I hate to say it, but a little more like dangle snipe, Selly score, you know, like it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't as cheesy as that. And that was my goal was to not make like super cheesy, you know, I play hockey graphic tees. Um, <laughs> but it was, I want to make some graphic tees that resonate with, with the hockey player persona was kind of the, the foundation of it. And, and um, you know, I, was, I, I I like to remember it as I got kind of bored of doing that a couple months into it and said, you know, I'd like to just figure out how to make my own garments. I think we could come up with some really cool stuff. I have, you know, my own ideas on how to, how to stitch these things and, and do the different cuts and fabrics. And so I'm thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, but unreal spelled all the way out. That's, that's the original name of the company, U N R E A L. Um, it just doesn't look great when you print it on a shirt or when you put it on as a logo, it's, for whatever reason, it just looks a little gaudy. And so the, the idea to shorten it to UNRL just like popped into my head one night, a few months into starting this company. And I'm like, huh, you know, I put it on paper and I ended up staying up to like three in the morning that night, getting it all, you know, drawn up the original logo and it, which it hasn't changed since, but, um, mm -hmm. got it on paper and I'm looking at, it, I'm like, this could really be, you know, a legitimate brand. I think there's some legs to this and it's a little bit ambiguous. Like people might not know what means yeah. unreal right? when you see it. And yeah. And I was going to say, I'm very glad you did that. And Trent, I'm not sure if you feel the same way about this, but when I first saw it, it made me think. And at the time yeah. I didn't know what, like nope. why I was exactly. thinking that way, but, but from like a, a marketing and branding perspective, looking back on it, it's just pure genius. I don't know if there was, thought put into it but just the fact that you're not 100 sure if it 
is unreal or if it's UNRL, but it gets you thinking and gets you talking. And I'm very glad you went Absolutely. down that route. Yeah. Well, thank and I think you. even yeah, just hearing I... the well, even just hearing the story of Unreal, how you picked that, I didn't realize that that's kind of where it came from. Like, oh, hey, a championship's Unreal. I mean, from Hermantown, unfortunate. I mean, won a couple state champions, and that's exactly what resonates. It's like, yeah, how it feels like that was Unreal. And I think that's just really cool. I never even put that together on how you guys came to that name. So I think it's really cool just hearing that now. I'm like, oh, that, that makes sense. That's really cool to see. So just a side note there. But, yeah. Just oh, decided awesome. to throw that's... in the fact that they won a couple. Yeah, of I was tournaments. gonna say that was casual. Was, yeah, well, maybe maybe Back when we were winning all those tournaments in high school, I mean, it was unreal. <laughs> what year <laughs> but, were you? Were you at Hermantown? What years? That would have been. God, I graduated eighteen, so 17, 18, 16, 17, 18. We won sixteen and seventeen, and then eighteen, we took third place. So very fortunate, okay. very awesome career. I like, sure. how he, I like how he plays it super casual, like he doesn't remember the year he won the state title. <laughs> yeah. ah, back in back in sixteen, well, we went, seven, we went, somewhere we went around back, there. Back. We went back to back in sixteen, <laughs> seventeen. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I wish I could say the same, but just getting out there and, and taking a lap on that ice was surreal. I mean, yeah. unreal. <laughs> it was. It was uh, pretty you know you're shaking in your boots by the time you get out on that ice and at first like i don't know if it was the same for you but we got out there and you know you've attended the state tournament your whole life and you see when you go there as a fan you're like gosh i can't even imagine what it's like out there with a packed stadium and yeah. so we got out there we had the morning game on i think thursday and we skate out and it kind of looked like bleak in the stands we're like what's going on you know you're looking around the lower bowl and then all of a sudden we I think my buddy Mac taps me on the shoulder. He's like, dude, look up. And I look up and just see the whole, the whole place, you know, the whole upper level was just a sea of orange. And we're like, wow, like, that's pretty dang cool. I and mean, it's that what is. a cool like spectacle for a high school kid to be able to participate in something like that. Yeah. Let alone win a couple of times. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, a little different for us. We're single A, so we never, they, I don't think they even opened the upper level for us. So it was just the lower, but even that was so cool <laughs> seeing that pretty full. But I mean, yeah, I've talked to, I mean, other people that, are, I mean, have moved on and pro whatever, and they still, hey, one of their most favorite things, what, I mean, if they've won a Stanley Cup, maybe that's one of their top things, but everything else, it's like state high school tourney. If they've played in that, like that was like all time their favorite thing. I'm like, that's really cool to hear on just how unique of an experience that is for people. So. Yeah, no, definitely. Absolutely. definitely. I think I've even I've even heard some guys say that have won the Stanley Cup that nothing compares to winning the high school tournament or, or playing <laughs> or whatever. So yeah. We're pretty fortunate oh. to have that in our backyard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's cool. Well, where were we on the journey here? We were talking about <laughs> Unreal. I think you were you were printing <laughs> you jerry rigged the printer in your mom's basement. And yep. you were still in the early stages selling things through Twitter. <laughs> um now you're building it into something much bigger than that. So fill, fill in the gap there for us. Okay. So, so yeah, we got the ball rolling. I was, I was working, you know, eight to eight to five or so at the real estate appraisal company and then coming home and, and printing shirts in mom's basement. And, you know, I just loved it. It didn't feel like, you know, I don't, I don't mean to paint the picture like, Oh, I was grinding. I mean, I, I was, but I didn't even realize it at the time. Um, I just loved it so much and really am passionate about building things and creating things. So, and I, you know, that started back with the web design thing. I mean, I just like, I would build websites for fake companies just cause I was like trying to map it all out. And, you know, there was no, mm -hmm. no infrastructure to go with it, but I'm you know, something about it just fascinated me. Like having an idea, bringing it to life, seeing it, you know, seeing it on online was, was cool for me, but then seeing somebody wearing it in public was, was like the next level for me. Um, and so, I'm, I'm plugging away, building, you know, building the company, printing shirts one by one myself, shipping them out. I was driving to the local post office with like a, you know, my backseat full of packages every day. And, and then I decided I wanted to try to go back and, and finish my degree because I was a year and a half in and I was, when I did drop out, I, I didn't want to totally get out of the game. So I, I was taking those classes at Century when I was living at my mom's house. And so I was kind of doing a lot of different stuff during that, that period of time, but um, ultimately said, you know, I've got Unreal going. We have a pretty good Twitter following. I think we were at, you know, maybe 10,000 followers or something. And we weren't selling a crazy amount of apparel, but it was, you know, I think we ended up, well, we ended up doing, I think, 140,000 our first year in revenue, which I, that shocked me. I, you know, we were looking at maybe 60 was the, the goal I had on paper on my business plan. Um, 
But fortunately, I connected with um, a good friend, Travis Swan at Mankato. So this was before I dropped out. And I had actually shown him that initial concept of the Unreal website, you know, prior to even the gaming jerseys thing really going. And, and so as soon as I had dropped out, decided to, to you know, really give Unreal another shot, I, I called up Travis and said, hey, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this whole Unreal thing off the shelf and dust it off. Do you want to you jump back in and help me out with it? So he was really the, like, the early on uh, support there helping us with the, the Twitter. I mean, he was the guy with the, with, with the thumbs doing all the marketing and stuff. So um, he was instrumental getting us off the ground and, and really building some demand for the product. And, and so when I moved back, I just, I was going to try to run that whole operation out of my apartment. So I brought heat presses down. I lined the, the walls in my apartment with shelves and had all of our apparel and boxes on my shelves and we were printing stuff doing like, <laughs> you know, you name it, like Mankato homecoming tanks to, you know, phone cases and all kinds of just like whatever we could get our hands on basically. And, and so we're, we're running the operation out of my apartment. I'm doing school full time and, um, yeah, I mean, that part was kind of a grind. I, actually, I skipped an important detail of the story. I was at, uh, back when I was at the appraisal company, I'm, I'm plugging away, you know, I'm usually talking to like a mortgage broker or a realtor every once in a while on the phone. Um, but my phone rings one day and, and I answer it, you know, hey, this is Michael, how can I help you? And I hear, hey, are you the t-shirt guy? And I'm like, like, how does anybody know what I'm doing? You know, at my mom, in my mom's yeah. basement, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm the t-shirt guy. Who's this? And he goes, this is Jordan Leopold. I, I need some t-shirts made for my buddies in the locker room. And I'm like, wait, wow. what? And you know, if you guys, I don't know if you know who Jordan Leopold is. I'm sure you do. Yeah, you guys, you guys are hockey guys. Um, but he was my idol growing up. He was a gopher player and won the Hobie Baker, which is like the Heisman of hockey, so as you know. And, and so I idolized this guy growing up and, and to have him call me, I was just like in shock. You know, it was like the first time I've been starstruck like bad. And so I'm like, yeah, Jordan, I'm the t-shirt guy. You know, what, what can I do? You know, what do you need? And so he wanted to play a joke on, on his, uh, let's see, what was the first one? It was a joke on, or no, he needed some shirts for his fantasy football team. And and so they had a big league going in their locker room. He was playing for St. Louis Blues at the time. And so I did did a good job on his t-shirts and shipped them out to him. He called me back. He's like, dude, those are awesome. Everybody loved them. I got another one for you. Um, we were going to put Alexander Steen's face on the Nirvana album cover, you know, like the, <laughs> with the little baby swimming in the pool. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so we put his face <laughs> yeah. on that and sublimation printed it in mom's basement and shipped those out. And he calls me just rolling. He's like, dude, that was awesome. I got another one for you. Uh, Ken Hitchcock, our coach, he wears, he wears this like sweater every day. Oh, Guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like a total hardo. You know, he wears this, yeah. he wears like a sweater every day. It's like a crew neck sweatshirt, gray, you know, gray crew neck that has just hockey and like impact fonts uh, just printed across it with a puck crashing through the text. Like your typical Walmart, like, grandma bought it for you as a kid sweatshirt and <laughs> yeah. he's like i'm gonna send you a picture of it if you can recreate that artwork printed on 30 grade t-shirts and i'm gonna put one in everyone's stall I'm like that's yeah, pretty funny <laughs> so so i do that and ship it out he calls me he's like on the floor laughing he's like dude that was the greatest thing ever hitchcock walks in and uh everybody's wearing these t-shirts and he just well, lost his mind <laughs> sure enough he's wearing the sweater again and, uh so that was that was cool i was building a little bit of a rapport with jordan and and getting to know him and it was just fun to like build a relationship with a guy that i really look up to and so after that third round of t-shirts i finally called him up and said hey man you know this has been a lot of fun i'll keep doing it for you but um what i'm really trying to do is build a brand i i'm I, it's called unreal and my ultimate dream is to get into the NHL and, and do some license, um, license apparel in the pro shops. And I told them about the gaming jerseys thing and how I'm doing this sublimation printing and how there's a lot of like unique, you know, cool things you can do with it. And one, one of the ideas I had was I wanted to make a Jersey, the design of a hockey Jersey. I wanted to put it into a hooded sweatshirt and, and make like, you know, a replica Jersey that's actually comfortable and wearable and more casual than a, than wearing a Jersey to the game. And so, I said, is there, um, 
you know, is there any way that I could make like a St. Louis blues hoodie and then send it out to you? And, and could you put it on the right person's desk and we'll just see if something happens. And he's like, well, yeah, man, that's cool. Um, why don't we, why don't we just call the wild and we'll get a meeting with them because they're right in your backyard. That, that'd probably be a lot easier. Uh, sure. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> wow. and, and so he, he called up the wild and, and scheduled a meeting and, and he actually came back to town and joined me in the meeting. It was like two weeks or three weeks after that, you know, I talked to him about the idea. And so I had to rush and like figure out how to make a really, you know, good sample for the meeting. Um, and it wasn't that good. It was, it was like a really stiff fabric. It didn't have a lot of stretch or give to it. It looked cool, but it was, uh, you know, the sizing was off. It was way smaller than it should have been. And it was an XL, but it was like really a medium, you know, it was like, I would have struggled to put it on. Um, but it, I'm like, you know what, it's good enough for this meeting. I think like, hopefully we can get it done. I printed up like, um, kind of a company brief on some cardstock paper. Like here's how many Twitter followers we have. Here's, you know, what we're trying to do. Here's, here's our target market. And, you know, basically kind of just try to give the wild a, a few reasons why it would make sense for them to give me a chance. And, so we went into that meeting and, um, you know, I was, you want to talk about starstruck on the phone, like seeing Jordan in real life and shaking his hand. Like, you know, it was like a five second ordeal right before we walked in there. We didn't, we didn't meet at a coffee shop and debrief a plan or anything. We just like, Hey man, how you doing? I'm Jordan. And I'm sitting there like, Oh my God. And then we walk into the meeting and I'm meeting, you know, walking up the grand stairs at the wilds head office. And I'm just some kid, you know? And so that was, uh, that was a lot for me to try to take in and, and, Luckily, I, I must have not fumbled over my words too badly, and we were able to, you know, get it done. I think Jordan being there was was the golden ticket, obviously. Um, but he he kind of stepped in and, and took the mic from me at one point in the meeting and said, "You know what? This is what all the kids are wearing nowadays. This is the next cool brand. If you guys want to stay relevant, then you, you should give them a shot." And the buyer finally was like, uh, "All right, yeah, we'll start with 72, 72 pieces, and we'll see how it goes." And and Jordan had thrown on the hoodie during that meeting and, and I could hear the seams like tearing, you know, and I'm like, Oh, please don't do not rip on me. And it somehow he squeezed into that like size medium shirt and it, it was enough of a pitch to, to get the job done. So they gave me a, a little test order and, and, uh, you know, thankfully we, well, we were able to figure out how to make a really good hoodie before we delivered the, you know, the real order to them. So we got new fabrics, figured out how to, you know, put it all together really nicely, got our sizing, uh, you know, pretty well dialed in. And, and, uh, I think, you know, for me, that's kind of how I always operate. I'm kind of off the cuff. Like I, I once the opportunity is there, then, you know, it might be a short time horizon, but I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. You know, if there's some pressure on me, then that's kind of, you know, where I like to be in most, it's not always ideal. It adds stress, but, um, it's, it's more fun that way for me. So we had a little bit of a, uh, quick turnaround to figure out how to make a good hoodie. We got it in their store and I got a call back, you know, within a few days um, from the buyer, Jen, that, that had given us the opportunity. She said, Hey, I need 250 more in a new design. Those things sold quick. And I'm like, what? You know, that was amazing to hear. Uh, hockey Lodge. Yeah. Yeah. Up there in the hockey lodge. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, Hey guys. Um, so that was pretty amazing to, to hear. And I was, honestly very nervous about about the product going in their store because jen had priced it at 99 dollars for the hoodie which back in you know what was it 2014 that was an expensive sweatshirt i mean today it's an expensive sweatshirt but i think reebok was the top dog back then and their highest end hoodie that the team was wearing was like 75 or something so hmm. i was like oh man i think you know she might have priced it out of the market but um sure enough it it you know, there's something to be said about the higher the price, the longer the line, I think, too. So um, fortunately for me, it worked out. We did another 250 and I did like a digital camo. Uh, it was like a white digital camo background on the hoodie and made their logo kind of tonal. Like it was a, I, I knocked it down to just one color, dark green instead of having the red and the mm -hmm. tan and the yellow in there. And people just loved it. They sold all of them in one night. And, <laughs> and so I got the heck call afterwards and, and Jen said, Hey, those, that was the fastest selling product you've ever had. I need another design. Reload me on that one and then give me a new design. And I'm like, okay, we're on to something. So at, at this time, were you still in your basement still or, or where was this at, at this time in your journey? 
Um, this was, I was back in college. I remember I was at a, uh, okay. I was at a concert in Mankato that night when I got the phone call and I was with all my boys and I was like, dude, you're not going to believe it. They sold out in one night. We were just like amped. It was so <laughs> fun. Um, so yeah, I was running it from Mankato and, and, uh, and I was back and forth though. Every like three times a week I was to and from the cities. And, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that was kind of the initial like kickoff i would say you know the, the getting it going on twitter was was our you know first initial launch but i think our real like you know we're here to stay was when when we started selling product through the wild and, and they gave us that opportunity that was a, a huge launch pad for us and um you know i think we've just continued to evolve since then and it's it's been quite a fun journey and, and just how doors continue and you know one thing leads to another and you start perfecting your craft and getting better and better and better and and it's uh you know that's what it's all about i guess you know hate to be cliche but that's that's kind of the american dream mm -hmm. and uh it's been you know it's been i've been very blessed to get get the different doors to open at the right times and things like that along this way so cool yeah, well, I, obviously, over the last several years, you've been building Unreal into something much larger than it than it was in the beginning when you were shipping. Uh, I don't even know what you would call them, like meme T-shirts to Jordan Leopold uh, when he was right. in blue. <laughs> but I do, I do want to get to time speaking about, of meme T-shirts, stand up one more time. Me? Yeah. <laughs> What's your shirt say? It says, it says "Yeah, boy." <laughs> so it was it's basically that yeah it was that for the yeah, hockey industry <laughs> pretty much this is a, a life is good a life is good t-shirt absolutely love these things anytime i see that's a life awesome. is good store i just wander my way in there that's um, one of the best the, that's one of the best brands to ever be created i think they did such a phenomenal oh. job with their branding and, and the messaging and everything is just incredible so that's one of the one of the hero brands that we look up to 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 you know, I wouldn't say we gather inspiration, but just, just to see how they're doing. It's like Coca-Cola, you know, they're not always looking for the next like trendy influencer to, you know, who's, who's going to be our Super Bowl ad. It's the same Super Bowl ads every time it's their messaging and their, their overall brand persona that makes them such a strong presence. So those are some of the things that I look at, you know, now today in our journey on how do we create something like that, where it's not about who's, who's the next best hockey player that we can go sign. It's more about what does the brand mean and what does it stand for? And, and so that's that's kind of I'd say the next evolution that we're really we're really trying to you know hone in on and, and master is how do you create a sustainable brand that that you know leaves a legacy and, and that's um, you know our, our mantra and, and um, a core value of our company and so um, yeah it's it's interesting how you know it starts as a let's how do we print T-shirts the right way and then how do you make a really solid garment and then there's so many levels and elements to creating a solid brand and you know a company in general but um it's been you know nothing short of incredible just just getting to navigate each step of the way and, and you know kind of going back to the gaming jerseys thing like i said earlier what a great learning lesson lesson that that was for me um to be able to fall on my face you know pretty hard and, and see you know see all angles of where I went wrong, maybe what I could have done differently to avoid that at the beginning. And, you know, it's just made me sharper and sharper over the years with, with the unreal side of things. And, and man, I'll tell you right now, like the unreal, we've had, we've had thousands of, of mistakes throughout this whole journey. It's been a total learning lesson. It's not like, you know, we had a, an executive team that we hired in from Nike to come, you know, create this brand. It was uh, let's, let's try to figure it out one step at a time. And so, um, you know, we're fortunate. I think we're very fortunate to be in the position that we are today and have, have a solid, you know, recurring customer base. And, um, you know, people, people have, uh, just like we haven't given up at, at what we're trying to do. And, we, you know, we were not even close to, to perfect or even good, I would say at the very beginning, um, you know, people have stuck with us and continue to support us throughout this whole journey. And, and I think it just keeps getting better. And, you know, we're finally, I, I think, gaining some serious traction and, and getting you know our feet under us and having set processes, having, having, uh, you know, a solid supplier, um, or a solid, um, network of factories that we're, we're partnered with that are, are producing our garments and, um, a great team of people, mo most importantly, that, that really buy into what we're doing and, and, you know, are willing to go the extra mile. And, and I think that's, what's, what's really separated us. And, 
you know, it might've started out as a, as kind of a one man band or a two man band and, and continue to evolve. But it's, uh, you know, we have such a great team of people today that are all just like, you know, guys like you and me that want to, want to make a difference and want to do something, want to create something and, and have a say in a, in a process. They don't want to just go clock in and, and clock out at the end of the day and then, then yeah. go on to what they want to do. I mean, I think people here really get a lot of fulfillment out of, out of building something and, and trying to leave a legacy, make a difference and, um, yeah. you know, be a part of something bigger than ourselves. I, th- I think this is a really good transition point and you got into it a little bit there. Um, but I want to uh, build on top of it. So at first you were just trying to figure out how the heck you can make a t-shirt and then you <clears> figure <throat> out how to sell it. And then you figured out how, how the heck can you scale this business? And it sounds like you're at a point right now where you're getting a lot of operational efficiencies out of the way you're doing things. And you're starting to think about what impact can we have as a brand? And can I have as a person outside of just, the business? What, what can we do as an organization to make an impact on our community? And so I want to talk about Change Starts With Me movement that you were a part of. Um, mm-hmm. So if you want to just share a little bit about where the idea of that came from and uh, what you guys have done so far with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's been a, that's been a really fun one and, and just a really cool project to be involved in and, and see kind of a, a really quick impacts that we can make and, and just by putting a little bit of elbow grease in and going a little bit um you know above and beyond what what we're used to um you know it started with we have a partnership with masonic children's hospital at the university of minnesota and we call ourselves uh the masonic mafia there's just a team of, of people business <laughs> business leaders and and community members that we all we all are you know very much intertwined with Masonic and and have a lot of involvement and in whether it's giving back or attending the events and supporting the patients, um, and and so we built this great network of friends and people. Um, and when this whole when the George Floyd thing happened and then the riots started happening, um, my my now fiance and I and and her sister said, uh, you know what can we do to try to go lend a hand and give back a little bit? So we we drove down to Minneapolis and what is it, Chicago and 26th, I think is the area that was hit hard, 28th, 26th. I'm, I'm a St. Mm-hmm. Paul guy, so I'm not super familiar, but um, we went down there, brought some garbage bags and some you know gloves and shovels and tried to just scoop up a lot of the debris and, and help clean up and do our part. Um, you know, kind of, it was kind of defeating though, honestly, like we're down there sweeping up and you're using a shovel and you got, I mean, yeah, I could just tell like a bulldozer is going to come in tomorrow and just like, you know, really sweep this thing up. It, it was, it was beautiful seeing all the people there that were willing to help out, but I'm like, God, I feel like we're really not, we're not really moving the needle. We're not making a huge impact. Um, it's cute, but we're not doing much. And so my, we had a, I had a story on Instagram, just like showing the wreckage and stuff that was down there. And, and one of the Masonic mafia members, Justin Hall, um, calls me up the next night. He said, Hey, I'm bringing my kids down there. Um, you know, we want to, we want to contribute what, you know, where would you say we should go? What, what should we do? And I was like, man, honestly, I told him what I just told you. And I said, I saw someone walking around with a wheelbarrow full of water bottles and, and they were handing them out. And I, honestly, I thought that may be a better impact or a, you know, making a, a bigger impact than what we were doing. And I said, if you can bring some supplies some food and essentials and stuff like that, diapers, whatever, bring that down there and start handing them out because looking around, there's the, the CVS or all the convenience stores, grocery stores, all were burned down. And Metro Transit wasn't running. So I'm like, well, what are these people that are living in this community doing? I mean, they're probably all stuck without any any essential supplies. And Justin is like a strong type A personality. He's he's like, all right, yeah, yep, on it, done by. Just hangs up the phone. I'm like, okay, hopefully that you know helped. He calls me the next night. He, he's like, or maybe it was later that at yeah, probably the next night he calls me and he's like, Hey, so here's the game plan. Uh, I've rounded up, you know, 50 people. We've got a donation drive. We're coming in on Wednesday and we're going to do a big donation drive in, in Woodbury. And we're going to bring all the essential supplies down, down to Minneapolis and hand it all out on Thursday. Um, and he's like, I need 150 t-shirts. We're going to call it change starts with me. I need 150 t-shirts made up by Wednesday morning. I'm like, dude, it's Monday night at 10 o'clock. You need, <laughs> okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it done. So 
whip up the logo for change starts with me and so i am not the brainchild of all that justin really is and, and you know he's got a we've assembled a team of volunteers that are just community members some masonic people some just you know justin's network um but there's a team of about 20 of us that are kind of a committee behind change starts with me and the first event we did was just a wild success we got down there we had um you know half the vikings team was there the timberwolves the wild players um, just to show their support. And then we had um, the radio stations there, the news networks. And we just created this like really kind of fun, upbeat, um, good vibes event where we had music blasting, handing out ice cream to the kids. And basically all the community members that were, that were you know, impacted by this were just lined up. It was like a couple thousand people, I want to say that we were able to serve. Um, they just lined up, walked through the whole assembly. of essentials and you know you had guys like pj fleck there that were he was dripping in sweat like carrying bags full of groceries and stuff to people's cars like that guy doesn't take he doesn't miss a beat or take a day off you know he he was in the trenches working hard everybody really was and so that was like really really cool to to see man we can you know if we put in a little extra effort we can really you know make someone's day and, and hopefully you know really help make a serious impact that, that people and just provide people the relief that they need in a time like this so that's kind of how it started and and what what was the initial driver and it, it, you know we had all these people like i said like the 20 person committee kind of throwing ideas in the hats and you know what what can we do with this and so i said well i'll i'll throw a t-shirt i'll throw the t-shirt on our website we'll sell it and donate all the proceeds back so we can raise a little bit of money and do something with that and cub foods jumped in donated i mean they had donated almost all the essentials you know out of the gates and and I'm sure some cash as well to help help the next family or business that was struggling. And, and so it turned into a kind of a movement where, you know, we're not only doing these food and donation drives, but also providing support and mentorship and, and scholarships and grants and things of that nature to um, people of color and just, you know, people that, that need really need the opportunity and, and otherwise would not have it. And so trying to break the the racial inequities and, and those barriers that, that exist and that have really come to fruition, you know, this past year. And, um, you know, just try to make, be a light in a, in a in kind of a dark, dark environment that, that we all went through there in 2020. And, and so that was really fun, really fulfilling, I think for, for myself personally, but also for my whole staff. I mean, my whole team was, was just like PJ running around carrying, carrying, you know, groceries to everyone's car and, and nobody once complained about it. Everybody wanted to volunteer their time. And, and so I think, you know, those are the little things that that's what, you know, our company mantra, as I mentioned earlier, is leave a legacy and, and things like change starts with me or getting involved with uh, Masonic or the Jack Jablonski Foundation, those type of those type of relationships are really, you know, the the piece that, that embodies that whole leave a legacy mantra. It's it's not only are we building a, a company that we want to to stand the test of time and really be bigger than, than all of us individually, but, you know, we wanted to give back and make a difference and use our platform for that, that purpose. And so, you know, I feel like all the work that we put in at the, the early stages to get to this point where we have a bit of a platform is really paying off because we can, we can do something like that. We can launch a t-shirt and donate the funds back and be able to raise $20,000 in, in a few months or a couple months or whatever. You know, I can't remember exactly the time, timeline it was, but um, you know, it's, it's, that's really fulfilling. And I think that that adds that extra piece of this isn't just a job for the people that work here. Yeah. So for me, I mean, it's just hearing the change starts with me just gives me like kind of chills on what you guys are doing and how much impact you guys can actually have with that. And I mean, I can attest to how awesome your event was. I happened to come down, raise money. I'm like, Hey, I got money to volunteer. And I actually came to your guys' event kind of by the Lake street target there, a bunch of people, oh, yeah. and your staff, we ended up having to go to another target to go buy supplies because obviously everything there was shut down, but it was just crazy. The amount of people that I saw there that you guys were able to impact. I mean, I just loved, I mean, exactly. You said, I just loved being, being able to give back there. Um, and just for the people kind of listening here, I mean, is there ways that people, I mean, if they're listening, they want to get involved, how can they get involved with Change Start With Me? Is there any best way they can go about that? Yeah, absolutely. So on our Facebook page, Change Starts With Me, um, that's where we kind of filter all the all the volunteers and, and you have that as like the chat forum. So if you want to volunteer and help out, um, get involved at our next event um, and, and help with these donation drives, you can, you can message us on Change Starts With Me's Facebook. Um, or if you want to be involved as more of a, a support mentor um, or you know, donations, things of that nature, our, our website, changesourcewithme.com, 
you can make a, a cash contribution. You can buy a T-shirt, um, or you can you can get involved as a mentor. That would be through the Facebook thing as well. But you know, we're looking for business leaders, um, emotional support leaders to to really help and and fill those voids and and give back with you know use their skill set to give back and and help you know, be a be a light or be a resource to people that really need it right now. So. Um, I appreciate you asking that. Um, yeah. yeah, either our website or, or our Facebook, which you can get there obviously through our website. So um, those are two great resources. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. And we'll, we'll make sure to pass it along. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I I have like a hundred more questions <laughs> specific about like All right. Fire 2020 away. and the transition that's happened. I've got time. I know we're over time right now, but if you have time, I'm happy to go into it. Yeah, let's do it. I, I can go okay, until well, about 1230. Okay, perfect. So we got about 20 minutes. Um, I want to just talk about 2020 as a year for you guys. Um, I, would, I would love to hear how it went for you personally. And then also on real as a business is if, if you had to pivot throughout the year, I'm sure there's probably a lot of changes that you had to make. Um, so I just love to hear a little bit more about how this crazy COVID year has been for you and your brand. Yeah, yeah, good question. It's been it's been nothing short of a, a roller coaster of ups and downs this past year. And um, actually, real quick before I dive into that, I'm the guy. I'm I'm, I'm having lunch in 25 minutes with or at one o'clock, so I got to leave in about 25. But the guy I'm having lunch with also had a unique 2020. His name's Ben Vanden Weimelenberg. I think I got that right. Yeah, ben yeah. VW yeah. is what he goes by. Yeah, but owner yeah, of Good Shop. Super interesting year. Yeah. Yeah. He, so a lot of companies, um, or not a lot, but you know, a handful of companies really dove in and, and used their infrastructure to be a, a source for PPP or sorry, PPE, right? Yeah. PPE, mm -hmm. um, medical equipment, face masks, things like that. And I know Ben had a huge hand in that and was probably one of the biggest mm -hmm. suppliers across Minnesota mm -hmm. for all that stuff. So, um, I'm having lunch with him today. I'm going to mention you guys and maybe he'd be a good guest to get on next and, and ask that same question. I'm sure he has a whole nother lens on it, but um, from our perspective, it's uh, it was unique because, you know, we got through, we had a big projection for this year. We wanted to really grow. And, and so through, we, we measure our success on a quarterly basis. So we look at 90 day intervals and, and so at the end of the first quarter, um, you know, we sat down, recapped, we had, we had exceeded our projection for the first quarter. Things were looking good and ready for a big second quarter. And all of a sudden it was, you know, quick into, into second quarter, this COVID announcement happens and, and uh, things start, the shutdown happens. And then, and then it was the George Floyd scenario happens. And, you know, it was like one thing after the next and, before we knew it, it was okay. Sports are shut down now. The NHL, you know, the Minnesota Wild isn't going to be buying from us. The, all, all the NHL accounts that we have are, are shut down. All of our corporate apparel accounts that you know we put the logo on the on the chest, they're not buying because everybody's in lockdown and businesses aren't really you know businesses are all suffering. Um, retail was our biggest hit. Second quarter is usually a huge quarter for us in selling to Shields and PGA Superstore and some of these bigger retail accounts. They usually place large volume orders in that, that window. And um, we got our, well, we got one order from all of our retail stores and it was, it was about a tenth of what we had expected it to be. And so we're all kind of looking around like, oh man, like this is not good. Everybody, every retailer we talked to said their budgets were totally on, on a freeze until you know, there was some certainty around when the, when they're going to be able to open their doors again. <clears throat> and so, yeah, things were looking terrible. It was like the Armageddon in the second quarter. And, you know, I'm talking to other, other business owners and talking to accountants and bankers and everybody I can, I can kind of try to pull a little bit of knowledge from on, you know, what's, what, what's the next move? What are you guys seeing? What are you doing? And, you know, 95% of companies were furloughing their staff and kind of, you know, hunkering down until the foreseeable future and I'm like, well, that's, that's uh, not ideal. It's not necessarily the route I want to go. I want to try to keep morale high because, you know, thinking long-term we could furlough a bunch of people and then, or just cut our staff way down and then try to rebuild, you know, maybe it's third quarter or fourth quarter. Maybe it's not till 2021 when things get normal again, but at least we, you know, we could reduce our expenses and, and not be totally upside down. Um, on the other side, but the big negative I see there is, 
you know, we've invested a lot into these, into our staff current that we currently have, and they've invested a lot into us. And, you know, I didn't want to start over from ground zero whenever to think the world came back to normal. I don't like the idea of our, our company is a kind of the beck and call of the rest of society. And, and we have to kind of wait until that turns back on for us to be able to run our business successfully. And you know, I don't like being in the fate of, of someone else's hands. For example, the retailers, you know, if they're, if they're not going to have foot traffic, then our business is now, you know, upside down. Well, um, I thought long and hard about it and, and ultimately came to this conclusion of, you know, I, I think it's better that we keep everybody on staff and, and, you know, we might take a big hit, but we have a line of credits. We can, we can talk to the bank and, and try to borrow some money to get through this. Um, and then the PPP program that the government put out that that was obviously some assistance, not, not enough to sustain the losses, but you know, it was helpful for sure. Um, but I had to, had to really pivot our business significantly and, you know, going back to, I don't like being, or having the fate of my company, you know, rest in the fate of, of our, our customers per se, or our retailers. Um, I said, you know what, guys, I've always wanted this to be like a, more of an e-commerce brand, more of a, you know, an online shopping experience. What if we, instead of furloughing everybody, we reposition some people, we build an e-commerce team, we put more money into marketing and in the online advertising side of it. And, and we really take a swing, you know, I mean, it was kind of, a, I wouldn't say it was like a last ditch, like, you know, we need to hit a home run here or we're done. Um, but it was, it was a big risk. Honestly, it was, it, it wasn't, comfy taking you know deciding to instead of cutting expenses we're going to actually increase our expenses here um mm -hmm. and try to teach people something new that they don't they, you know that's not even their realm um but went for it and honestly probably the best decision that we ever made and it was uh it was pretty dang cool to see you know second quarter was still a struggle we were we were down half a million dollars from our projection or maybe a little more and um, you know, going into Q3, we were, we were starting to get some real traction on, on the e-commerce side of it, which historically has only been right around 20% of our total business where the, the other 80% came from selling to retailers and, and having that, I guess, wholesale, um, approach. And so we wanted to try to flip the script and it's, it's been something that I've always wanted to do. And now is kind of just the now or never timing. So, um, took a swing at it and we you know i think speaking to how, how great of a team we have it, it, you know they really went all in on that concept and and crushed it on the social media side of it and the marketing and, and the paid online advertising side of it and um you know we had a good third quarter and it was mainly due to the the e-commerce stuff we had a lot of uh wholesale opportunities that, that also started to come back a little bit but um it was you know it really interesting i talked about earlier about you know feeling blessed that certain doors open in the right times well got a random cold email from from a company you might know barstool sports um and they heard of, they sent heard of they, <laughs> have you, okay yeah it's it's this new yeah, thing it's, yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> um but they sent an college, email it's for college kids There's a lot of college people yeah, yeah yeah so i don't know it's <laughs> kind of goofy you know, memes and things like that but they have some affiliation with sports so it seemed like it might be a good fit um their sales director from chicago reached out and said hey you know i i've been wearing this polo from you guys in this hat for like three days in a row we got to figure out a way to work together and danny from my sales team she passed the email to me she's like hey is this something you want to pursue I'm like yeah <laughs> something i want to pursue no, so, no comment but yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, absolutely full head of steam. We want to pursue that. And, and so got in touch with, with this guy from Barstool and, and, you know, he's, he's like, I, I thought it was going to be maybe a sales pitch, like, Hey, come spend, you know, a hundred grand on our marketing stuff. And, and it wasn't and to my surprise. It was, Hey, let me connect you with our, our, our retail team or our merchandise team. I think we could really do some cool stuff together. And it was like a no strings attached. Just like, here's the introduction to our, our merchandise team. And so we sent them a few samples. They loved the it was our crossover hoodie. Um, and we did a bar stool golf version of it, sent out a sample. And, and um, you know, it was all preliminary at that point. We didn't have any orders from them, but Riggs is their, their personality on the bar stool golf or foreplay podcast. And he did a, he, he did a 
Instagram post or a Twitter post or something. And, and it was a selfie of him. He was wearing the, the sample that we had sent out and it was something about his COVID test. He said, uh, you know, test came back negative or something. Uh, I'm COVID free. And then it was like thousands of comments uh, right up. Where's that hoodie? How do we get the hoodie? How do we get the hoodie? And so they kind of had no choice because of that post. All of a sudden rigs came out a couple hours later. Okay. The hoodie will be on our website in a month. And I had my friends were screenshotting it and sending it to me. I'm like, this is news to me. Like, I'm figuring out after you guys are because they haven't even gotten an order. Um, sure enough, you know, we were sitting there waiting by the phone and then the merchandise team calls, hey, uh, you know, we have a situation. We, we're going to need 500 of these hoodies immediately and or however many we could get. And so we pulled them off our shelf, stitched them up, shipped them out, and it just went wild. Like the – the overall demand for it is like, you know, it's kind of like the Minnesota wild thing again. <laughs> you know, you got even bail. And so that was pretty exciting. And, and just like, you know, how, how cool is it that that happens right, you know, in a, in a time where we're kind of, you know, trying to rebuild and pivot. And, and so that, you know, that was technically a wholesale order, but it was, it was attributed, I think in part because our, e-commerce business uh, we were advertising more and we were getting in front of these these type of people and and it just it it's kind of cool how they just they you know kind of like a pyramid just piggybacked off of each other and and so we've we've had a great relationship ever since i think it was july or so when, when that call came in um that was the start of the relationship and we've just been running with it ever since and got a ton of new stuff coming out and and uh you know from their perspective it sounds like the unreal hoodie and, and the products we've got them so far are just like absolutely crushing and, and we've helped them kind of un uncover their potential as a as a brand and, and selling merchandise so it's been just unbelievable what a year what a year it has been you know and, and so many highs and lows like we were in the trenches you know thinking the business might be you know the door might be closing for good on us here at the end of second quarter and then it opens back up and, you know, all kinds of cool stuff happen. Like, you know, we had a nomination earlier in the year for entrepreneur of the year and that, that was kind of exciting, you know, and, and a testament to just my whole team and, and, um, you know, to be recognized for something like that was pretty, pretty cool. And, um, you know, I think we were a, a small fish in that pond, um, you know, from our, our overall size and our revenues and everything like that. I think we were going up against a lot bigger companies, but, um, you know, for whatever reason, we, we were fortunate enough to make it to the finals of that. And, and so for the Midwest region, we were uh, named, a, you know, the top 20 finalists out of the, I think it was a seven or eight state region. And, and so that was kind of a cool, you know, a cool nod and just like a, a good testament to the hard work that we've all put in, you know, throughout, throughout not just this year, but you know, since the inception of the company and, and, uh, you know, finished actually. So, going back to the, the revenues in quarter two and the pivots and things like that, you know, we, we came to a point where we're like, okay, we need to really revise our, our revenue projections here at the end of second quarter. Cause it's just not realistic. We're not going to hit what we had projected in January. So we cut it way back, um, got to a realistic number that we thought we could, you know, if we really got, got some steam and, and worked hard, we could probably achieve it, but it was a stretch. Um, it was, you know, 600,000 less than our initial projection. And, and, uh, and so we, we went for it. And then by the end of third quarter, my team is, is asking us to revise, asking me to revise the projections to go back to our original January <laughs> number. And so we went back to the original January number and then it was like, honestly, like magic. I, I, on December 31st, I'm looking at my phone and, and, um, and I texted my sales manager, Danny, I said, Hey, how close are we? I was, I was just getting in my car. So I didn't have like my you know, our financial statements pulled up, but I said, how close are we to, um, or where are we at revenue wise? And, and she messaged me back, um, we're $300 away from breaking the $4 million threshold, which you know, our goal was 3.6 in the beginning. And I'm like $300 away. So we ended up hitting the the $4 million mark at like 10 o'clock that night on the last day of the year. And it was like, wow, you know, I probably shouldn't, shouldn't divulge too much into financials on a, on a public podcast, but you know what it is, it is what it is. You know? And that's, that's part of the whole story and the journey. You know, some people think 
that maybe we're smaller than that. Some people might think we're a $50 million company. Um, but the, the truth is the company started with $300 and back in, you know, back when I, when I shut down gaming jerseys and pulled it out of my savings accounts and we haven't taken any investments or any sort of, you know, handouts from yeah. any, any, any investors or banks. We've kind of shied away from it um, and just try to do it organically and bootstrap it. And so, to get to this point is, is pretty cool, you know, and now we can really start putting a bigger multiplier on those, on those annual projections. And, and, uh, you know, it gets, it, it, it's, it's always a challenge, but it's, uh, you know, I, I, we have it all mapped out on what the next 10 years look like. And, and, uh, it's going to be fun just chipping them, chipping them down one at a time. So. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited for you guys. Um, I'm also very glad that you went on the offense because, I think there's so many opportunities for you in the e-commerce space that were, as you know, um, untapped. And there were, there were a lot of a lot of companies that I'm sure just went on the defense and tried to cut all of their expenses. But just the, the fact that you went on the offense and tried to make something out of a very, very scary situation was really cool. Um, with that, I, I think we could probably wrap it up here, uh, Trent, unless you want to throw anything else in there. Uh, I think this is a really good ending point for us. Absolutely. Cool. cool. Well, if, Jordan, if you want to stick around <laughs> awesome. for a minute or two after we shut this down, um, we'd be sure. happy to chat. But thank you so much for coming on today. It's been super cool to hear your story. Um, and I think a lot of people in our community can learn a lot from the conversation we had today. So thanks for coming on. Absolutely, man. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It's it's an honor to be here. And, and uh, you know, I always, always enjoy talking with guys that are like-minded and, and, you know, want to kind of learn exactly how – how our story happened and, and to be able to, you know, I don't know, paint a picture and, and explain that it's not always, you know, I think there's a big difference between um, just going for it and, and also going for it or going for it in an organic bootstrapped way. And, and you know, knowing you have limited resources, but you're going to, you're going to learn from it and it might not be your, your end all be all, uh, you know, final career, but you're going to gain so much just by, just by taking the chance and, and having, you know, taking a leap of faith and going for, going for it and starting a business, um, you know, with limited resources, there's the other angle where you can go get a business plan on paper and then do a bunch of seed, you know, seed funding rounds and raise a ton of capital. And some businesses do require that. And so I'm not saying that's the wrong way to do it by any means, but I think there's a way to, you know, to get to the point that, we're at and beyond by, you know, it takes a lot, maybe a lot more elbow grease and, and a lot more grind, but, um, you know, it's, it's very rewarding and fulfilling too. And, and, you know, there's less chips on the table. You're not, you don't have other people breathing down your neck, worrying about their investments being protected and things like that. So I guess to, to share the kind of organic approach or the, you know, the green grass bootstrap method of starting a business and getting it off the ground to, to getting it to like a fundamental, um, you know, we have, uh, a wealth of employees and, and good processes and, and things like that in place. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoy kind of sharing that that angle on how to how to get a business off the ground, and hopefully it, it inspires the next person to to do it. I mean, we had nothing more than just Google and three hundred bucks when we got it going, so I don't think you need any more than that. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, if it means anything, I'm inspired, and I'm sure Trent is. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Oh, well, right, guys. Thanks again, Michael. Thank you.